And Saudi Arabia is also leading a number of Arab countries in blockading Qatar. The tiny emirate is the world's richest nation in per capita terms, with most of its wealth coming from exports of natural gas. So how has the move by its Arab neighbours affected it? Our senior, senior business producer, Mobin Nasser, sat down with Isa bin Mohammed Al Mahanadi, the former chairman of Qatar Tourism Authority, to find out. I think the blockade... Uh has a, had an impact on us. Uh, I think the impact is more of uh, uh, socially more than anything else. It's hard to believe or to live in an environment where you just wake up one morning and disconnect with your family members uh, uh, in different GCC or in different countries that you have been, you know, you had a close relation with. Economically is the least, or when it comes to economy, is the least impact I think we have we have suffered as a country. Uh, the, the blockade is not something we have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, get into by surprise. To be honest with you, as a government, we have been discussing or preparing, and I have done in my life. I have done more than three strategies where we gone through exactly this scenario. So when, when this happened, when the blockade happened, you could, you could you know, I'm sure you have uh, followed the news and the, the reports, that as a government, the reaction, the reaction was so fast, we, got, we adjusted to, to the situation. And that's not an issue for us uh, anymore, to be honest with you. I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the blockade has been a good catalyst for us to, to expand, uh, to look for alternatives, to look for new suppliers. We were, not so we were shying uh, to, or shying off to, to, to go to areas or to go to places where our neighbors, our brothers, were active on. I'll give you an example. I mean, uh, we were not discussing uh, setting headquarters, free zones, and so on, because Dubai has it. We were not, you know, um, uh, thinking to expand or, or, or manufacture big. Uh, uh, there is uh, products because Saudi has it. We were not discussing, you know, uh, things like related to even butamine and uh, uh, the road construction material because Bahrain has it. When I developed the strategy for for tourism, for uh, you know the the, the national uh, tourism strategy, uh, 2013, I remember we had tough time selling the idea to the government that we need to open up a new markets for us. One of the scenarios we were discussing that strategy is what if the influx of, of GCC tourists stopped coming to Qatar? At that time, it was really, you know, it's hard to convince anybody to start to think that we need to open up a new market for us. When this blockade happened, in less than a month, the plan was endorsed. I mean, we opened up for 80 uh, destinations. The 80 destinations now, uh, uh, they can get visa uh, uh, quickly. You've also founded the Qatar Green Building Council. This, there's so much construction going on in Doha right now. Does it worry you uh, how you will manage the environmental and social impact of this development? When we started 2008 Green Building Council, the word green was, was something that uh, never heard of. And now this has changed. Nowadays, we have uh, um, you know, uh, more than 30, 40 companies producing a green uh, products, either from recycled uh, material or uh, environmentally friendly sources uh, to make that material. And Qatar has been uh, many, proje many projects, many buildings that have been certified as green buildings. As a matter of fact, uh, share uh, properties, uh, one of the projects I uh, started, now is becoming the, probably the largest, uh, what we call, green forest in the world.